since I was born, been a spring flower's daughter. Hi. Hi, my name is Lisa and I make crochet and knitting videos here on my channel and welcome to the third episode of my knitting podcast. And my hair is a little bit wet still, sorry, but this was really the only moment I could film this. And also outside they're doing some construction work, so if you hear some noises in the background, that's why. I hope you're fine with it. I've been having to deal with it for the past three days or so, waking up at 7am because of it. So hopefully you're fine with it for the next, I don't know, like 45 minutes or so. <laughs> so yeah, I have loads of things to show you. I have some whips, some finished objects, not a lot though, but a few. I have some things to talk and chat with you about, so I'm just gonna talk with you and we'll see. Okay, let's start with the beginning, I guess. Let's start with some finished objects and I'm trying to think if I can do this in chronological order, but... I did it, I finished three projects in the past, I don't know, one and a half months or something like that. A bit over a month, I think it's been since the last podcast, so if I didn't forget anything, I finished three things. And the first one, oh, they're pretty dirty, I need to really wash them, are these socks. Yeah, these socks, they are the very special socks by Stone Knits. By now we all know that I love her patterns so much. I have made quite a few of her sock patterns already and the reason for that was partially because I loved her patterns and she had like a deal kind of thing. So on Ravelry, I think it was buy three patterns and then you get the fourth one for free. So this is the third one that I've made of her patterns. I'm actually wearing right now the... Um, Magic Toadstool socks and I've also made the Cosmic Flow socks as well. But this one, or like these two, I enjoyed so much making. They're these super cute socks with strawberries on them and oh, I think they're just adorable. They're really dirty right now and they're full of dog hair because I was at my dad's house a couple of weeks ago and I was wearing them during this weekend and of course my father, he has a dog, uh, a Labrador dog. That's the best dog that I can wish for. These socks are white and his hair is dark brown so the socks are like full of dog hairs. And another thing that happened is because I wore them in my Doc Martens and I know that that's always kind of a bad idea but I do it anyways because <laughs> I like that, I think it looks so cute. But they have like felt it a lot at yeah, I mean, I cannot really show you because you will see all the hair and disgusting stuff in it right now, so I won't show you exactly, but especially the, the toe part has felted so much and it just, just doesn't look very pretty, but I think that it's not a big problem, like, they at least have become more, like, durable because of the felting part and the stitches are so close together, it just doesn't look very pretty. But these ones were so fun to make. The yarn that I used for it was, all of it was Drops Nord, I think. So I used white, red, and green. Um, or no, the green I think was Drops Fable in, I think, apple green or something like that. But I had so much fun making these. They turned out so cute. And I am actually thinking of maybe making a matching sweater vest or something with it because I think the pattern is just so cute with the little strawberries on it. So yeah, we'll see. It's really been a sock knitting past few weeks slash months. months. I think that this year, 2022, is my second year of knitting and this is really, for me, the year of socks. Because now that the weather is getting warmer, I find socks to be such an easy project. You can take them with you so easily, so that's really nice. Um, I also really like about socks that they don't take up a lot of room in your place, which is so nice, and you can never have enough socks. Like, come on, you never have enough of those. They're also great for gifts, but I haven't made them as gifts yet. I so far have made only socks for myself. But uh, yeah, these ones, very, very cute. I would definitely recommend it, and I might make it again um, in the future as a gift to a friend or something, the pattern. Really cute. Then the other project I finished is actually bigger and you have seen it already because it is my re-knitted sweater. I finally did it. I've made a whole video about this 
project two weeks ago i think and this was my sweater that well it first was a sweater that i made as one of the first projects i have made when i started when i learned how to knit um, because i made this like huge sweater with very big balloon sleeves and it honestly fit like a blanket it was so big because my gauge was just just off and it was also made completely on straight knitting needles and you could see that the seams were not looking very nice and things like that so i had been wanting to unravel it for the longest time ever just because uh, the yarn i i used i kind of liked that yarn and yeah i thought it, it was just a waste that i didn't wear it so often so i have made this one the pattern that i used for it is the louisiana pattern by petite knit i really liked it it was so easy such a good like staple such a good like staple sweater pattern so i really like working on it it was my first time doing a raglan style sweater as well and honestly i have no clue why i didn't do this sooner because it's so easy and it looks very nice so yeah i'll definitely be doing that more in the future i again like like i said in the video as well i loved how the color combination turned out with the color blocking i think is so cute and i said that i was a bit scared that i didn't like this white tip at the end of the green sleeve but it actually doesn't bother me at all and i have worn it quite this also has dog hairs in it <laughs> i have worn it quite a bit actually since making it just because it is so versatile oh it has like a hole in it now i see but uh, fine it's so versatile and comfy and as, as uh, like for right now i use it quite often when it's a bit warmer outside but then in the evening you don't need a jacket or a sweater or anything like that so i wear this one some people they did tell me and they are completely right i will do that next time to wash the yarn before using it to re-knit the sweater because of course the yarn was kind of curled up because of the stitches and things so next time when i unravel something to re-knit it i will like wash it or steam it just to make it a bit more straight but it doesn't really bother me that you can kind of see that the stitches are a bit like i don't know the yarn was kind of twisted together so in the end like the result to me is really stunning and i like it a lot and yeah i can't wait to wear it even more once the weather gets colder well for now i'm very happy with summer so let's keep it like this for a while for a while but still i can't wait for months like autumn and winter come around that i can actually like wear it a lot more often so very cute this actually looks so cute together as well <laughs> And honestly, uh, like I also said in that video, I'm so happy that I found a way to reuse some old yarn and to have new stuff to wear that I really love. And this is really my process of making more knitted and crocheted items that I really love and that I actually wear a lot. So yeah, <laughs> second project. And then the last FO, where is the other one? Oh, here it is. Yeah, my last FO are these socks. I have blocked them already, so they are looking really nice and flat and evened out the stitches. Really pr pretty. This is the color. Uh, somehow the color it reminds me a lot of Nitty Natty, if you know her on YouTube. I feel like she would have this color combo as well. I don't know, somehow I associate her with like a hot pink or something. Um, and someone on my Instagram, and now I cannot really unsee it, especially when I have them on, said that they look a bit like meat. You know, like, yeah, I don't really have to ex ex explain, I guess. So they are, they do look a little bit like meat, but I prefer to think that they are just cute and pinky, pink striped socks because I'm a vegetarian, so I don't like having the association with meat, so yeah they are my first time knitting with hand dyed yarn here is the rest of the hang that I, or the rest of the cake that i still have um i forgot the name i think it's it was meilerweitz merino 
I'll link it in the description which one it was exactly because I kind of forgot but I think that it's actually very cute I said it before but it's not really a color that I would choose for a, like a sweater or anything but for socks I think it's very cute and so like fun and springtimey so yeah really nice and the thing I love about the hand dyed yarn is that you can see little like specks of other colors in it as well like little bits of yellow and orange and I just think it's very very pretty so yeah I really like them and I blocked them on my new sock blockers. Well, they're not that new. I got them like a month ago or something, two months ago. But they're these ones. I will include some pictures and I got them from Etsy. They are, so far, they've been pretty useful. I have been wanting to get a pair of sock blockers for the longest time ever. So I was very happy when once they finally arrived in a mail. I do think I could have gone a size down in them because they are a little bit on the big side and yeah, I, this is my whole problem with socks. I've talked about this with some people in my knit club as well that I have quite small feet. I have a size, an EU size 37. So is it, it's not even that small, but like pretty small. And then the other problem I have is that my feet are super like narrow. I have very narrow feet. So with socks and knitting, since they also expand a lot when blocking them, they usually end up too big. It's the same as with the ones that I'm wearing right now. They are like a little bit on the bigger side, which also means that usually I end up wearing my knitted socks only at home, like on top of other socks as really like comfy, warm socks for when it's cool outside. And I don't really wear them in shoes that often and when I do it happens like with these ones that they are going to felt and that they are going to peel a lot because of the friction. So I am still on a way to like get the perfect sock that I can also wear in shoes because so far it hasn't really worked for me yet. I still really really enjoy knitting socks though just for at home and like for comfy stuff so I don't mind it that much but still I think it would be nice if I could actually end up having socks that I can wear outside of the house as well so yeah but the sock blockers are really really nice I mean they're not perfect like the wood is a bit damaged and everything but I think that uh, like this whole pattern of the flower is very beautiful and that I kind of am just a sucker for things that look nice and yeah so far they've been useful but I just think that I could have gone a size down I ordered them in a size small to medium but I think that I could have um, gotten a size small and that it would have been maybe a little bit better but still I'm very happy with them let's put them over there and the pattern that I use for these socks is the slip knit slip yeah slip knit sock pattern by Peyton's Knit, I think. It was a free pattern, pretty easy to follow, um, nothing really to say about it. It was fine, I did end up doing the foot part, like the toe, the way that I always do it, so I didn't follow the pattern provided by the, by pa by the Peyton's pattern for that. The heel, I think, is pretty nice. It is like a... You should, I, tend to do short row heels but this one isn't and I do think that it looks very beautiful like yeah that it's very like durable so yeah these socks very cute and I think I will actually wear these though they do fit me really well though so. um that's it for all the finished objects not a lot of finished objects but I've been busy with other stuff and I have a lot of whips that somehow I get stuck on and then don't work on them anymore. So let's get to those whips. The first one, I did something super stupid. Like literally a minute before I started filming this video, I put all the projects on my bed so I, bed, so I can sit down here. And then I sat down and I heard like a <coughs> and I saw that my 3.5 millimeter needles that they snapped like one of them and yeah so I have like these two pieces now and this really sucks 
because then of course now I can no longer work on this project but it's also not I mean yeah it's it's pity but it's also not the worst thing ever because I ordered some new interchangeable needles I'm very guilty um, I ordered the Lika, Lika, Luka, Lika, whatever you want to call them needles the interchangeable needle set in umber because I have been wanting them for a long time and they're so beautiful and I right now have the Drops Romance interchangeable needle set and although I do like them they are not perfect and some of my knit club friends they have the set by Lika and I looked at it and it, it was just so pretty so yeah I just ordered it as a treat for myself together with some other needles like it was an expensive day but I used some Etsy money for it so it was really a treat to myself and something that I'm sure I will love a lot so once I get those new needles I can continue on these and then I will again have 3.5 millimeter needles so I can continue working on it yeah the project that I was using that for I now just need to be careful that I won't slip off any stitches but the project I was using it for is the Daphne top let's here it is I have so far only done like the busts part I can kind of show it like this and then with like the under lining um, and now I just need to do the body part that goes straight ahead but I'm not entirely sure about my sizing guide the thing is that the pattern itself is written in a really nice way it's just that I have a very weird body or I shouldn't say that like my body type is very different than the sizing of that pattern because I have like I'm very mm, how do you say like my, I have a very small waist and I'm not big in the shoulders and things like that but I'm not flat chested unfortunately oh my god I wish that is why I needed to adapt it a bit because if I was following like this pattern for a size small then the bust part would be very very revealing and not really working for my body type so i made it a lot bigger and longer but now i'm not sure if i will end up look liking the way that it's gonna look kind of and maybe i did make it like too big as well so yeah that's why i kind of lost motivation to continue on it because I do think that the end result could be super super cute and that the color is also something really nice I am using Drops Extra Fine Merino which also is a fiber I know that grows a lot when blocking it so yeah I also need to think about that and that's why oh uh, it just gets too like too much stuff to think about so then I put it away and I haven't worked on it for I don't know two or three weeks or something so it's been a while of not working on it but maybe in the next couple of days I will pick it up again and continue working on it the pattern itself is really nice it's by Friday Knits Phoebe from Friday Knits who also makes very nice videos on YouTube I think that the the like the design itself is very cute I just think that my body is a bit more complicated to make it fit too so I need to change some things I do really like that I had to do eye cord for the first time and also German short rows for the first time because I had well I had done German short rows in socks for the heel but not in any other type of project so I really liked using it for this and I think that it ends up looking very very cute I had also never done eye cord and I really like that as well and I think that it looks very beautiful like this eye cord um, by Nov yeah it's very difficult to show because I'm at a point where it's not really visible to to show what it looks like. My god, okay, I'm <laughs> not being able to talk really clearly. But maybe you get the point. I will work on it again soon, one, um, but I cannot even work on it right now because the needle, the needle broke. So I have to wait for my new needle set anyways. And then another whip. Well, you actually can't really say it's whip because I unraveled it but it was a remake of this market bag this market bag is one that i made last year it has these this bottom of like flowers and then this market bag mesh kind of top 
And ever since I showed it in my video of everything I knitted and crocheted in 2021, ever since I showed it in that, many people have been asking me if I can bring out a pattern on it or remake it or whatever. And I really want to, but the thing is that with this design that I made, I'm not completely satisfied with it because I think it's just too narrow and too like too long. So I would want it to be a bit more stretched out kind of. So I have to think of that. And I started on a new design, but then yeah, I didn't like the I didn't like the way it was turning out. So I'm also a little bit stuck on this one and I think I will just unravel from my whip and then start on it again or something. But yeah, I really like this pa this design as well and I really want to bring out a pattern on it. So I will continue working on it, but just once I get motivation again and I don't have that right now <laughs> for this one. So hopefully soon I will get it because I do know that a lot of people want to try this out and I really like it myself as well. So yeah. Oh my god, I'm really in this like w once I'm when I'm looking at my whips there don't get me wrong in the end I have some whips that I really like but I have I'm just at a difficult point with pretty much all of my whips and for me when I when knitting something doesn't give me joy I um, put it away very easily because it's really something that should make me happy and if it's annoying me and too complicated I put it away and that's why I've been quite kind of enjoying like socks, like small projects that are not too complicated or like a sweater like this one, like very n nothing complicated to it, easy to follow and that brings me a lot of joy. But I also like learning new techniques and things like that so I'm just still trying to figure out a good mix between the two and I also don't really feel guilty putting something away when I'm just not in the mood for it so yeah that's what I am doing right now <laughs> next up is one of my own designs as well and that I'm also a little bit stuck on but it shouldn't be too complicated it is this pair of socks that I am designing let me show you these are the orange socks yeah or I haven't uh, had a name for them yet specifically. These are uh, some socks that I'm designing myself. They are inspired by the cover of a book called Small Pleasures that has these oranges on the cover and I think that it is turning out to be super cute. I did the heel already last week but then I realized that I made a mistake because I thought that I made the sock with 60 stitches but I think I did only like 56 so I made the heel with the wrong number of stitches so I need to kind of redo it I had to unravel it and then didn't get around to redoing it oh, I see that I dropped a stitch but uh, yeah <laughs> yeah I need to redo the heel and then I think it will be fine the yarn I am using for it is a little bit tangled but it is onion nettle yarn and it is the like the orange and blue are from onion nettle and the green is from cope knits it's called socks yeah so yeah those are the socks that, those, that's the yarn that i am uh using for it which other whip do i have maybe let's immediately get to another sock whip that i have it is these ones let me see, I will put them on my, I will put one of them on my sock. Yeah, let's see, these ones. I have one sock finished already completely. Ta -ta -ta. And with the second one, I am almost finished with the cuff. And then I need to do the heel. I think I will work on the heel tonight, actually. These are the Blooming Lavender Socks by Stone Knits. It's my last pattern of the four Stone Knits patterns that I have. Also, I think she's bringing out a book at later this year, I think in September or something, and I cannot wait for her book because her sock patterns are always my favorite. They're just color work, but not very complicated. And yeah, I just think that they are super cute and that I really like the purple color that I use for it. Like really, it's really nice. And they have lavenders on them. 
what else to say about this yeah i think the, lav the lavenders are so cute i did make a little mistake i see now with uh, with uh, decreasing on the gusset but i can forgive myself for that and then the second sock is also almost at the heel part and this also doesn't work in a short row heel but in like um a i don't know what it was called exactly but a different type of heel where you make like a square and then turn it around and then with a type of slip stitch pattern which i do think is very pretty i am saying that in the beginning i really didn't like knitting up the heel and then picking up stitches but now i'm kind of fine with it and i do think that it looks sometimes a bit more beautiful because then you also have those decreases here in the at the gusset that i think also look very nice so yeah i do understand why people like knitting that type of heel as well so yeah another pair of socks oh it's getting so like messy again here but i think that's just the way that my knitting podcasts go they always get super super messy i feel like this is also going to be one that's a little bit shorter this knitting podcast because um i i think i've said this also before or maybe i'm just always repeating myself but it's because like you guys have said that you love a very long knitting podcast like an hour or something but um my voice starts to really hurt after talking for about like 20 minutes straight so forgive me if this one is going to be a little bit shorter this knitting podcast okay um yeah oh i also wanted to ask you I'm probably gonna figure it out myself anyways, but I am using always DPNs for the heel because I knit on tiny circulars and I prefer using DPNs for the heel and of course also for the toe. And I'm using these bamboo uh, wooden ones right now, but they ha have started to, what do you call it, like splint? Like uh, little parts start to come off. If you get what I mean. So I'm looking for some new DPNs and I do know that the that the like Chia Chia Gu ones are very very nice uh, but they're super super expensive. I did also order the Chia Gu needles, Chia Gu needles for socks like the lace interchangeable set. I did order those so I'm very excited for those ones. But let me know if you have some recommendations of good DPN metal DPN needles, preferably a set and a set that also includes 2.25 millimeter because I have looked at some of the sets, for example, the set by Drops, but I don't think it includes a 2.25 millimeter one. So let me know if you have some good recommendations for sets that I should really check out. And then, no, this is not the last whip. I was gonna say, how oh, the last whip, but it's one of the last. And it's one that is pretty difficult to show, also because I'm now in like the middle of a row. But it is the Clotilde Cardigan by Knitting for Olive. I will include a picture in the screen. And I can, let me see if I can show you, kind of, I guess. It is this, I don't think you call this lace, but it has these like, what is it called? Oh my God, I cannot even think of the English word right now. Like not, um, a triangle but like a like a diamond shape I don't know a route in Dutch but that won't help you either but yeah like it has this like diamond shape I guess thing on it which looked very pretty and I have been wanting to knit a cardigan for a while because I don't have that many cardigans in my closet and I think it could be very useful to have a nice neutral colored cardigan because the yarn I am using for it is um, Drops Wish in beige. I think that is really looking pretty nice. Something I am very excited about, and because I want to show you that I bought this, it are these like large stitch markers. Because the stitch markers that I have, they don't fit around these needles because they are knit, these are knit in 10 millimeter needles. So yesterday when I was at the yarn store in Amsterdam, the off-stop, I asked them like, hey, do you by any chance have stitch markers? Yeah, these fit. That fit around like 10 millimeter needles. And she was like, yeah, we have those. So I bought these. For now, I've been p using little pieces of yarn for it. 
because the stitch markers that I had, they didn't fit around these needles. And I had been going to some other stores and they didn't have these stitch, big stitch markers either. So I had been just using little pieces of scrap yarn that I tied around, which honestly also works fine. It's no problem. But I just prefer these stitch markers because they're a bit easier to work with than the yarn pieces. So now I can finally use those big stitch markers. And I really like this like pa pattern that it's creating. This also uh, worked with short rows that in the beginning I didn't understand, but I think I didn't mess it up or anything, so it should be fine. The only thing with this one is that it's a chart-based pattern. So uh, at first I didn't print out the chart and I just did it on my laptop, but then when I was at my mom's place, a couple of days ago I decided to print out the chart because it's just much easier when you can cross off what you've done and because of that it's not really a chill knit that I like to take with me I really need to sit at home have my paper with me and really like pay attention to the process and not making any mistakes so it's not the most um, chill knit or anything but I do think that it's gonna be very cute in the end and Drops Wish is just a really nice yarn to work with and speaking of Drops Wish, I have a little unboxing thingy. I got um, more yarn to actually finish this cardigan. And I got this last week in the mail, I think. I But I haven't opened it yet. So I thought, like, why not open it right now in the video? And something I love about this web shop, I ordered it from Brei Web Shop in the Netherlands yeah is I love that they put it in vacuum packaging so now I can open it well I think I'm gonna need some scissors okay let me grab some scissors <laughs> It just looks so funny to me that it's packaged like this, <laughs> like this. But it's actually so smart because that way it can fit through the mailbox and I don't have to be at home to get it. Oh, I opened it. So now it's gonna... Here it is. You do need to give it a little bit of extra time to get the air back in it. But yeah, it's just five more skeins of this yarn for this cardigan. Just because I had only three skeins at home and I think with eight skeins I can um, finish it. So yeah, very excited to continue working on that cardigan. Okay, mm -mm -mm -mm. what other whips and things do I have? Ah, here. I have some in this bag. Let's see. Mm, yeah. Uh, the ones that I have in here are all like, need to be unraveled, I think. Because I bought um, this yarn, these two, oh, wait a minute, these ones, orange and pink, a while back to make a test knit for the houndstooth skirt pattern and I have started on it but I don't like the gauge at all this is actually I've re restarted on this a couple of times and I really also need to I've just done the the hem of like the hip the waistband but I don't like the gauge it's way too see-through way too like see-through and because the skirt I really don't want it to be super see-through at all so I need to unravel it and start again and for that reason I have like kind of put it off because I cannot find motivation yet and I do know that it's a test knit so I'm not actually sure when the deadline is um, but I know that some other people are also struggling with it a bit because the pattern is I think the design is super nice but the calculations are a little bit difficult to get the right size and with increases and stuff like that so yeah it just takes a while to uh, to figure out and I just don't like how it's going so far so I need to unravel it 
<sighs> and then lastly, uh, also a whip that I want to unravel because the technique I use isn't that nice. It was, it's this, I wanted to make a bag with lemons on it, but I work, I'm work. i working the color work in the round and that way it's just not putting up very nicely because I wish that I would have just ended at every row and then turned around and did it the other way around, but I didn't do that. So I want to unravel this. So yeah, I can be very sure about this. This is like the bag of things that needs to be unraveled because I don't like the way that it's going. Okay. Yeah. Again, such a mess. In terms of uh, other new yarn, I didn't get a lot of new yarn. And I think I am not going to show you right now, but I will show you next week because tomorrow I'm going to go to a very exciting Thing. It is the Handwerk Beurs. I'm not sure how to like a craft fair kind of you could translate it to in Zwolle and I'm going to with some of my knit club friends which I'm very excited for and I think I will film there as well and probably buy some stuff as well so I think next week you can expect a like vlog type of haul thing so I will then also include some of the other yarn that I got and I won't talk about it in this video. I can quickly go through all the things that I want to knit in the upcoming month. I want to, of course, finish the lavender socks because I think they're very cute and I can't wait to have them finished. Of course, I want to finish all my other whips as well, but the ones I'm working on the most right now are the Clotilde uh, cardigan and my blooming lavender socks and my orange socks. Those are my main projects right now. I want to make a macrame plant holder for my dad's birthday. In my last knitting vlog, I showed that I got this macrame yarn, cord, whatever you want to call it, and that I really want to make this macrame plant hanger for my dad's birthday. So yeah, that's on the plan. I want to start on my camisole number two top. I got some knitting for olive yarn that I bought a while back and I really want to make camisole number two with it. So that's on the plan. I of course want to also finish the Daphne top, but I need to find some motivation for it. And I want to maybe start on a new like either a cardigan or a sweater vest or a sweater and one of my own designs because I somehow really feel the need to design my own stuff again. So yeah, those are my plans, real in short. In short. But I'm gonna end the video here. Sorry if you wanted a longer knitting podcast. I'm sure next time I will be a bit more chatty, but. For a lot of things in this podcast, I didn't have too much to say, and yeah, also, I don't know, I shouldn't apologize for this. So I really hope you still liked watching this knitting podcast. Let me, of course, know what you are working on, because I'm always curious to read the comments and see what others are working on. I will see you again next week. Till that time, stay safe, and yeah, bye!